It's not just the United States. Canada's in a rough spot right now. And Australia, you add all these guys together, with the, the big unknown being China, it could very well be worse than 2008. Are you tired of overpaying for your gold, silver, and platinum bullion coins and bars? Then visit sdbullion.com today. SD Bullion was recently named the 177th fastest growing company in the United States by Inc. Magazine. This is because they offer the absolute lowest prices in the industry and follow up with over-the-top customer service. So what are you waiting for? Go to sdbullion.com today. Enjoy more than 60,000 happy investors that save money on every precious metals purchase they make. Hey everyone, this is Elijah Johnson with SilverDoctors.com and with us today a new guest, Ben Jones, the host of the Housing Bubble blog. Ben, thank you so much for joining us today. It's my pleasure. All right. Now, I'd like to, I re first uh, heard of you uh, because you were on the Peak Prosperity podcast. You talked about, you know, the 2008 crash and really before that, how you were seeing a lot of overvaluation in the housing market. Did you want to share a bit about your background in the real estate industry? Well, I, I was really pretty much a pedestrian when uh, in 1998, I moved to Austin. Texas to take a job in a dot com and my landlord uh, had lied on his mortgage uh, application and said he was living in the house he was renting to me and so I got his first mortgage bill and he was paying twice as much for his mortgage as I was paying him in rent and that was the highest rent I had ever paid at the time and for months, I was like, why on earth would this guy take this whopping loss on renting this house? And he had just bought it, you know. And I came to the conclusion that he was betting on appreciation rather than. So that was my first inkling of a housing bubble in modern times. You know, what we say modern times compared to the one we experienced in the 80s in Texas and the oil states. But that was a largely a commercial real estate bubble. And. You know, I can show you some charts that are pretty clear that the commercial real estate bubble in the United States today is, is larger than the housing bubble. But yeah, it was 1998. I first started getting this idea that house prices were doing something really odd. And then I moved, you know, I kind of put it aside. I moved to Sedona in 2003, Sedona, Arizona. And uh, people were really getting goofy about real estate saying that it was going their house was going up ten thousand dollars a month um so in 2004 uh i kind of became concerned and started the my first housing bubble blog and um then of course two or three years later sedona was in a serious real estate recession and looking back now at 2008 what kind of signals were you looking at that showed that, you know, housing was overvalued? Well, I, I can, it's, it's really interesting to me the way people remember the timeline. I can show you blog posts that I was doing in t early 2006, showing people losing $100,000 on houses in, say, Arizona, 150000 So uh, by 2008, the crash was already in full swing, and now it hadn't hit Wall Street or the the public's mind as strongly as it would, but 2006 the bubble had already popped, and in a lot of markets, especially like Florida and Boston. I remember Boston was one of the first, and you know it, the the little story at the time about Californians cashing out equity and going into uh, Las Vegas or Phoenix. It was true. But like a lot of manias, um, you only need a kernel of truth. So at that time when I was in, we were, yes, there were tons of Californians in Sedona. And a lot of them were using that equity. But it created, uh, basically laid the, the groundwork for everybody to get involved. So locals, their rationale was, sure, I can't afford this house. 
but some California is going to come along and he can, he, he can pay me for it. So I'll take on a loan larger than I can really handle. And, you know, I'll end up cashing in a lot of that sweet equity, as they say. And it, it blew up, you know, it didn't work. Now, as we look at where we are today, I know you uh, have pointed out on, you know, the Peak Prosperity podcast, you were saying that really the housing bubble never stopped. We're still in it today. Can you explain why you think this? Well, you really can't prove it, these, these sort of things, um, with the exception that if prices, if it was the same, is the same bubble, prices should correct lower than they did in like 2011 or 12. But the reason why was, you know, I was just kind of maintaining my blog. I was by then I was in the foreclosure business, like 2008. I started in the foreclosure business, and so I was just watching things. And prices were down, prices were down, and then all of a sudden I came across this article about people in Huntington, California, I think, camping out for new houses. And then a week later. Uh, uh, about people writing love letters to sellers, and that was in California. <clears throat> and then shortly after that, a Chinese guy hearing about a condo sale in Vancouver, Canada, and he went down that morning and bought one, you know, pre pre construction. And so I started thinking, you know, well, this thing's taking off again. And I, I think that had the uh, the mania been extinguished in the bus, that we wouldn't have picked up. Right where we were, uh, with people being over exuberant about house prices and and gambling, basically so the speculation just came right back in. And sure enough, you know, before you knew it, we're back to the reality TV shows. Um, so that's that's why I don't think that the bus was allowed to ring the speculative nature out of the, the population. So we're. We went too quickly back to gambling on houses. Now, how does the housing bubble currently look worldwide right now? I know you recently posted uh, an article uh, from Australia and some speculating that, look, it might housing in Australia might fall about 40 percent in the next you know, 12 months. So it seems like is this a worldwide phenomenon right now? Oh, uh, definitely. And um, I've. I've posted probably hundreds of articles on Australia in the past year alone. Because uh, that's what interests me the most is the ec economics of, of these manias. Uh, and there's no place where it's more clearly demonstrated than Australia. So maybe Vancouver, Canada, and, and Toronto. But uh, what's going on in Sydney is, is a classic. Uh, bubble pop and yeah it's it was in london uh, uh it's more it's a sh much shorter list to say where there's not a bubble anymore um dubai kenya nigeria south africa uh, lebanon surprisingly um turkey but london is a good example because uh they're you know you may have heard that they've got a lot of empty uh, condos in London. Most of them are luxury. Well, those are really built for uh, Asian speculators and Russians, you know, Russian tycoons sort of thing. So it was a, the, the idea at the time, you know, if you go back to 2014 or 15, was that rich people are investing in housing and they don't live in it. They just drop by, you know, a week or so and that's why we got they're demanding luxury they want they don't want an ordinary apartment they want you know something way over the top well that concept spread as far in as far as i can recall from london you know to then new york uh hong kong and to sydney and uh, now all these cities have got canyons of luxury condos that are dark at night. So, it, yes, it's definitely a global phenomenon. And I, I, in my opinion, it was re-inflated by uh, the central banks and the governments and the quantitative easing. 
And where are we right now? I mean, you know, that one article was saying that people say maybe in the next 12 months in Australia, real estate could fall by 40 percent. Are we like at the precipice right now of another popping of the bubble? In my opinion, we are, it's popping right now. Yeah. And what does that mean for the average person listening? I mean, are there actions right now that might be prudent for people to take? with regard to like their house, right? Like, is it better maybe for people to be renting right now than owning a house? Like, what is your perspective? And obviously we can't give financial advice on this channel, but just what is your perspective on some actions that might be prudent given what we know about the housing industry right now? And obviously people should do their own due diligence on this, but yeah, what is your perspective? Well, I don't think anybody's ever bought a house or sold a house because of something I said. I mean, you may know on my blog, I just point to things in the media, you know, with the budget that I have and pretty much let people make their own conclusions. Um, we're at a point right now to where, you know, if you're renting, uh, I don't know why you would want to stick your head in the buzzsaw that's going on right now in the markets. And I don't know that you could sell if you wanted to get out, but what I'm doing and what I think is prudent is just to get ready. The biggest problem, you know, they, um, first of all, let me point out that the markets are all falling and there's, you don't hear anything about subprime. You don't hear anything about uh, depressed areas in Detroit or none of that. No, this is Sunnyvale, California. This is Seattle. You know, where some of those market uh, neighborhoods in Seattle are down a hundred thousand. Well, first of all, the, Real estate industrial complex has not warned people. They said this wasn't going to happen. It couldn't happen because the loans were so solid. Well, prices are falling. You're going to get foreclosures. You're going to get a lot of them. Uh, some of those places like Denver, house prices are shot so far beyond what people can afford. And there's, and there's overbuilding. They tell you there's not, but we're at the end of a 40-year high in multifamily construction. So one is just don't – you got to – Take everything that you hear from the establishment press with a grain of salt and think think for yourself. Be, you know, use your critical thinking skills and, uh, you know, maybe get ready to uh, to buy some foreclosures. But the, and the other big problem that we have is this convergence that it's not just the United States. Canada's in a rough spot right now and Australia you add all these guys together with the, the big unknown being China yeah it could very well be worse in 2008 uh, nobody nobody knows we won't know till we ride it out but um, it should also be uh, remembered that lower housing prices are good for the economy they're good for the workers are good for businesses <laughs> so there may be, there's going to be winners and losers, but we'd all be better off if house prices got back settled back to their natural level. You know, house prices didn't used to be a gambling tool, um, and everyday people could afford them. We didn't talk about them all the time, and there weren't Zillows and Redfins uh, handing out daily advice on what we should be doing with we. In my opinion, we should just get back to that and remember that getting back to that is going to be a, is a healing thing and not something to be dreaded. You know, taking everything that the establishment media is telling you with a grain of salt, it's going to be important in the future because what's going to happen, it's already happening in Australia. They're already starting to say, oh, we need to cut rates. We need, there's even a, a central banker over there that's already talking about QE to bail out the housing market. So we're about to go into this thing all over again about, oh, we need to stimulate housing. We need to keep prices up. Well, uh, those people don't know what they're talking about. Uh, low house prices are good for everybody, just like oil or anything else and food. So uh, we're about to have this big debate again about, well, we need to bail out housing. We need to bail out Fannie and Freddie. and I hope that as a public, we can get out ahead of this and say, you know, we're not going to stand for it. Um, it's not logical. It didn't work. You know, QE just made things worse. You know, the whole world's now in a 
a bigger bubble than ever. So uh, I would hope that we can have a sensible discussion about these bubbles and not just ignore them, act like they don't exist, or it's a conspiracy theory. We need to have a public discussion about this stuff and and try to shake it. We, you know, after an internet bubble, housing bubble, and like you said, bonds and maybe even stocks again, uh, and now housing again in the commercial real estate. I think we've had enough of these bubbles, and we, uh, it should be part of a, a public discussion to how to get out of this, get off this roller coaster. All right. Well, Ben Jones, thank you so much for joining us today. I guess before we let you go, did you want to share with the viewers any last thoughts you had? And also, where can they find your work online? It's housingbubble.blog. Just hope everybody has a great Christmas. And come on over to the blog sometime, and, uh, and we'll chat. Awesome. Once again, Ben, thank you so much for your time. Uh, my pleasure.